Hello, my name is John Broadwell. I'm a professional embedded systems consultant and medical device development consultant at my company, Broadwell Consulting Incorporated. Uh, if you need professional help with the project, give me a call. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a number of different technologies that work well together. Uh, and in this case, we're going to demonstrate how to take the screen of an OLED and simultaneously show it on a web page that's served up by an Arduino. So let's take a look real quick at the various components that we have here. Uh, it's really pretty simple. I've got an ESP01 module that's being powered by a USB battery through one of those uh, UART adapter uh, programmer things. Up here you'll see an I2C breakout board. This is something that I manufacture. You can get on my web store at Amazon. I find this to be really useful. I keep it just kind of plugged in all the time to I2C devices that I'm experimenting with. And you'll see that uh, you can connect up to eight different devices on I2C. I like this board because soldered to the back of it are two uh, 2K2 resistors uh, that provide the I2C pull-ups that you need in order to make an I2C bus function properly. Then, of course, the ubiquitous OLED display. And on the right, you can see a cell phone that is attached via Wi-Fi to the same network that the... Uh, ESP8266 is connected to. So it's uh, really quite a simple setup. First, let's go through some vocabulary that we're going to use. HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. HTML is the way you describe a website. HTTP is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And that's the way a client like Chrome or uh, Safari requests a website from a, a web page from a server. Uh, a web server is a piece of software that runs all the time waiting for a client to attach to it. In our case, our ESP8266 is going to run a web server. Typically, a web server runs on port 80. There are lots of different ports that are like almost like sub addresses of an IP address. An IP address is what puts your computer on a network. Web sockets are uh, a relatively new technology developed in 2011 that provide the opportunity for a server and a client like Chrome or Safari to maintain a constant connection and push data back and forth. Uh, essentially, it's you know it it reminds me a little bit of UDP data packets if you're familiar with that, except uh, transportation is guaranteed and there's some additional encapsulation that makes it convenient. Uh, there can be things like heartbeats, etc. So when you open a web page that uses web web sockets, it will make a semi permanent connection to the server on the other end waiting for the server to send it information, or you can send the server information. It's good for real-time stuff that needs to change after the web uh, page has been loaded. And typically, a socket server is on port 443. JSON is a uh, way of encapsulating text data. It is kind of like XML, but much lighter weight, and in its simplest form, pretty easy to parse. The JSON is commonly used when you send text back and forth over a web socket so that you can identify what the text that you're sending back and forth means. So let's take a look at this sketch. Uh, we're going to include the ESP8266 Wi-Fi, ESP8266 server. This is a file that I drop in one of my libraries called mywifi.h and includes my Wi-Fi SSID and password so that I don't have to put them in sketches, which is nice when uh, I want to upload them to the internet or share them with people. Uh, Adafruit GFX and the SD1306 uh, file, those will drive the OLED display. We've got a 128 wide by 64 I2C display. And then WebSocket Server. That's the technology we're going to be using to push the screen. We are going to instantiate a web server. We're going to instantiate a socket server. And we're going to say, I've got a display that is 128 bits wide. 100, I'm sorry, 126. And we have a display that is 128 pixels wide and 64 pixels high. 
uh, we're going to create a function called web page that we call whenever someone requests the web page over the server. We're going to set up wire so that we can talk over I squared C. In this case, you can see that we're using an ESP01 module. And so I've got my data and my clock on lines two and zero. If you're using something like a node MCU or, or an ESP32 module, you may want to use just plain wire begin. So we'll open up the serial just so we can dump out some diagnostic stuff. We'll wait 200 milliseconds in case we've just done a reset and we want to uh, allow the the Arduino to open the serial monitor. So we're going to initialize our display and we'll call that its I squared C address 3C. Wait 500 milliseconds. Uh, we'll clear the display and we'll say we're connecting to whatever the SSID is of your network. And we'll start the connection. And so we'll call Wi-Fi begin. That will put the device on the network that's specified and we'll wait until it's connected. And then we'll print out the IP address where we are connected. We're going to start up the WebSocket server. And I'm sorry, we're going to start up the HTTP server. And we're going to start up the WebSocket server. And we're going to tell the HTTP server, the one that delivers web pages, that when somebody goes to the default address for this IP address, call the web page function. Down here, we've got our Arduino, Arduino loop. And within the loop, we have to give some processing time to the HTTP server and to the socket server. And other than that, we're just going to constantly update the display with millis. Millis is a function that returns the number of milliseconds in startup. We'll divide that by 1,000 here so, we get a thousand, so that we get seconds. And we'll also display the IP address, which will make it easy for us to connect up to that device. So we hit, and then we display, display, which uh, moves the, the image that we just created over the I squared C bus to the, to the physical display. So once a second, we're also going to copy that display to the uh, person who's requesting our web page using the WebSockets interface. So every 1,000 seconds, which is what this line and that line does, we're going to do a WebSocket broadcast bin. Now we say broadcast. It's not really a broadcast in the terms of like a UDP broadcast. It's a broadcast insofar as anybody who's connected right now, send me that, uh, that send out this piece of data. It's also possible if you have multiple different connections to send out a specific piece of data to one connection or another. But for my purposes, I usually just broadcast. Display get buffer is a way that we can reach in and grab a pointer to the frame buffer that is uh, for the OLED display. If you take 128 pixels wide by 64 pixels deep and multiply them together, you get 8,196 pixels. You can put eight pixels in a byte. So there are 1,024 bytes in that buffer. And this example that we're doing is very tightly coupled to the idea that it is a landscape display 128 by 64 uh, display. If you were using a 128 by 32 or some other aspect ratio, then this example would have to change. So we're going to send out that binary data once a second that is just a copy of the picture that's on the display. And we're also going to send out a text broadcast and here's a very small JSON document that says, I'm going to tell you that my U32 uptime, and this is just a string that I've, I've picked. These are not types or whatever. This is just how I like to identify some of the stuff I send out when I send out JSON text. And, uh, and we're doing an sprintf to put the value of millis in there. So it'll also send out that text. When a request is made to the web server, it will load a web page that we've defined below and hand it off to the uh, client. Note that the web page function gets called once when we load the page. As a result of the web page getting loaded, we will establish a constant WebSockets connection between the client that loaded this page and the server. And we'll talk about that later. So then we've got a whole bunch of HTML and JavaScript. 
everything below this line, as far as the ESP8266 is concerned, it's just text. It doesn't actually do anything with it except shove it out over the HTTP interface. There's some JavaScript in here, but that doesn't run on the 8266. It runs inside of the web browser that attaches to this. So you can see basically the, you know, we've got uh, our HTML. And I should notice, by the way, you know, these are const st uh, character strings that we're putting in program memory uh, that way so we don't use RAM up for things that doesn't change. One really nice thing to know in C++ is that you can create a long literal string by preceding the quotes with the capital letter R, then indicating a start and end marker. So here's our start marker that we've picked. You can pick different start markers depending on what your data looks like so that you don't have to escape any characters. And then here's our end marker. So everything from here to here will be sent out to the web server. If we go back and look at the web page, we say, oh, okay, here's some header stuff that we're sending. Uh, we're going to tell it we don't know exactly what our content length is. We're going to send out this first string of raw web page data. And then you'll notice we have a second page of raw web page data. Why is that? Well, because I want to drop something in the middle. It turns out that at this point right here, when we go to open this WebSocket on the client side, we need the IP address of the server. And it turns out there's not a really good way. I was surprised to get that through JavaScript to say, oh, what is the server that this client is running on? So, you know, if you, if you can tell me different, something that will give you an actual IP address, not just a host name, then uh, leave it in the comments below because in my Googling, I couldn't find it. The so what we're going to do with this uh, with this web page, we send out the header stuff, then we send the first half of the data, then this will change depending on which IP address the device claimed when it attached to our router. So this part needs to be different. Then we send out the rest, which is constant, and then we tell it, okay, this is the end of the connection, which we have to do because we didn't tell it at the beginning how many bytes to wait for. So all of this will get sent. You can see there's a variety of web page code, but let's take a look at that on the client side. HTTP colon slash slash 192.168.1.248. And there it is. Okay, and we can see the, uh, it looks like this has been up for about an hour and it is updating in real time. And that is what we would see on the, on the display if I put the camera over to look at the display. We also see that we're getting in text format the millis, and that's incrementing a little bit more than one second because we say, okay, has it been more than a second? Plus there's some overhead processing time. We can clean that up a little bit, but I tried to keep this uh, example simple. I don't care that it's not exactly one second updates. So that's what that is doing. So let's take a look real quick at the code that created this. So open all these things. This is the code that was sent to the browser by the uh, ESP8266. So we've got our HTML, our screenshot, all of this stuff was just a, um, I can't do that. All of this stuff up to this point right here was just a plain uh, string. Then the ESP8266 Arduino code inserted the uh, IP address of the server and will attach to port 443 to get the WebSocket. Then below here, we have a variety of, uh, of code, part of which you can see down here, we've got an, uh, a WebSocket on message and it will get an event. That event can be of a variety of different types, like an object, which is like a, a blob of data. And we'll set up a handler to deal with that blob of data. That'll come up here. Or it could just be uh, string data. And so you can see, we know the string is going to be in a JSON format. So we parse the JSON. And if the value U32 uptime is in there, it will be defined. If so, then we say, OK, I want you to find in the HTML up above the U32 uptime span, 
which is a way that we can mark part of the web page. And I want you to shove this value into its inner HTML. So if we come up here, we can see, okay, we've got a canvas. That's where we're uh, actually, if we come up to the body of the HTML, we can see we got a canvas. That's where I'm drawing things and a break. And then the words, the little words uptime, then the span ID of uptime. And so it's going to put that value. It, this was put in there by the JavaScript. Uh, this is blank when we start. But it puts that value into the space between the spans that has the ID down there. So if we had multiple different kinds of data, we could have a bunch of if else statements here and multiple more spans up here, each with a different ID tag so that we could put different data on the website. So when we have the blob data come in, that's a little bit more complicated to handle. So we've got we're going to read it through what's called a file reader, even though we're going to stream through the bytes. And that file reader is initialized right here. And we give it a function that gets called anytime the file reader gets a new file, or in, which in this case is a blob of a 124 bytes of data. So we have to take that, uh, that blob and turn it into something we can process. And so this will be an array of 1,024 bytes. And we're going to say, OK, the first thing we're going to do is fill in the canvas with all black. Then we're going to set our color to cyan. Then we're going to iterate uh, top to bottom, left to right. And it turns out that pulling that data out is really, really simple. You just take it a byte at a time. The least significant bit is the leftmost bit. And so a bit at a time, we just draw it on the, uh, on the canvas on the web page. And boom, there we go. So that's about the size of it. So we can hit it again. And there we go. So that is how we can duplicate a OLED screen on the Arduino that is also serving up the web page. If you have any comments, uh, leave them down below. Web, sir, web stuff is not really my thing. There's a lot of people who know this a lot better. I'd like to give credit uh, to one of the other videos that I watched, take a look at the link on it down below that helped me really understand a lot of this stuff. The guy, the guy has some really great videos and I would recommend watching those if you have more questions about these things. I'm not real well equipped to answer a lot of questions about JavaScript or the other web technologies. That's not exactly my, uh, my specialty. I'm more on the embedded OS device driver uh, type side, but this was useful enough and I learned enough that I wanted to make a video. Uh, I hope you found it useful. So. I uh, recommend you like my channel and uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel. And uh, hopefully I'll have some more interesting things to show you sometime soon. Also check out my Serial Wombat 18AB chip uh, and the other products in the Serial Wombat line. Broadwell Consulting Incorporated provides help developing medical devices with a focus on developing embedded firmware, which is compliant with IEC 62304, ISO 14971, and ISO 13485, as well as remediation assistance for products already in production. For more information, contact John at Broadwell Consulting. Support requests for Serial Wombat should be sent to help at serialwombat.com and will be answered on an as-available basis. Also, feel free to leave your question in the comments below.